Other M, Issue 7. Sonic goes into a forest where he sees Rotor training with Antoine's dual swords, which look really cool by the way. You can tell by their jaggedness that they're really effective. And it's unique to see Rotor fighting with swords. Sonic compliments Rotor and is asked in annoyance what he wants. He says that Bean's calling for all the heroes to show up and tells Rotor that he's been gone for six hours. Doing nothing but slashing a sword around? He must be exhausted. Then Rotor needs to be told that he somehow got himself injured when you think the pain would tell him that. He shouts that he won't let Bunny help him, and then says that will be necessary. Sonic feels the need to ask what he was doing out here, when it should have been obvious that he was trying to become a better swordsman and improve his skills. Instead, Rotor yells at him for asking, saying that's none of his business, and then says looking depressed that Sonic doesn't need to ask. As they walk through Mushroom Hill, Rotor says he's always been defensive, being self-aware rather than refusing to believe Sonic's right in his insult like a normal person. Rotor tells him to drop it and goes back to looking sad. I don't believe that Sonic would swear. Scourge would, and an alternate version of him certainly would, but he certainly adjusted fast. Anyways, Sonic figures out why Rotor got mad at him, and surprisingly, he figures out that the reason Rotor's training is not just because Bean is being overprotective of him and he wants to be a better swordsman, but because, as he very bluntly puts it so cheerfully, Rotor blames himself for his, flam for his family's death. Rotor proves he's right by acting as if he assumes that Sonic was blaming him for it which sounds delusional of him. Rotor yells at him, calling him a worthless prick, and says that he's been working hard his whole life and has a hard time forgiving what he thinks is the real Sonic. You've been working hard, but you haven't been allowed to be in the action by Bean, so weren't you more useless than he was? He yells at him that he's training so he can get revenge on the people who killed his family. When Sonic says he wants the world... When he saw what Sonic... <laughs> wants the world to end... When Sonic says that he wants the war to end just as much as Rotor does, Rotor harshly tells him to die as well as go away, saying that the heroes have already lost over a week waiting for him to heal when he could have his revenge. While I, I definitely may understand why he'd be annoyed with, with them losing a week, yeah, obvious evil anti-hero Rotor right there. And I kind of prefer this to the actual Rotor. At least here, he has an actual personality. He has things going on with this character. Like, he obviously has maybe PTSD or something. Uh, I didn't know that they lost a whole week, though. But it makes more sense than him just taking a few days to heal from a head injury. Though even a week is being generous, I think. Good thing he's a Mobian. Sonic calls Rotor out on his selfish motivation, saying that when he's gone his revenge, Rotor might just go and sleep while the Guardian will wipe them all off the map. Sonic tells him that his revenge will do nothing but open up new jobs in the Chaotix. Rotor is annoyed at Sonic showing modesty by insulting his counterpart again, and he calls Rotor a coward hiding behind revenge. How is he a coward? And he d it does he just not care about Ernie's respect anymore? Well, maybe he shouldn't, to be fair. Who cares if one person doesn't like him? Rotor tells him to take that back, and Sonic gives him a satisfying The Reason You Suck speech. You don't fight for the cause, you don't fight for your friends, you don't take sides, you don't make opinions, you don't train with us, you don't do jack but what you do for yourself. At least when I was doing nothing, I was doing it for the cause. I was doing it as a member of the team. And he says that he's worse than any member of the Legion. He's right. And I don't remember the canon comic having a The Reason He Sucks speech at all, so this is really satisfying. I thought Bean was just not letting Rotor fight though. Wouldn't that mean that this isn't Rotor's fault and he shouldn't blame him? I'm getting mixed signals here. This is Rotor threatens him angrily with a sword, and Sonic tells him that he's too much of a coward to take the criticism and the truth. Bark shows up by coincidence to save the day, being the mediator, and telling Sonic that while he's right, he's in no position to judge. Actually, he is, but Bark doesn't know that. Bark says that Sonic's betraying the cause even worse than Rotor if he seeks to cause trouble among his teammates. That's harsh. Really? Why are you blaming him? It's obviously, like, Rotor who would have the reputation as overly defensive and stuff. Why would he be the one who's blamed? And he says that they all have to work together. So Bark is filling the role of Sally in this group, being the mediator. Sonic and Rotor awkwardly walk home looking depressed and regretful. And Sonic at home complains that it's not fair of Antoine to skip dinner to get access to the mattress. So I'm guessing he's going to do this every single day from now on and defeat the point 
for the most part, of him winning the fight with him. Also, the way he's suddenly drawn here with his spine shorter, he looks like a girl. Rotor says that Bark and him got to talking at dinner. Sonic says that he didn't see Rotor replying much. Rotor says that he was thinking about what he said and admits he was mostly right. Sonic tells him compassionately not to take everything to heart. Rotor admits that he should make more of a commitment to the rebellion. It isn't been holding him back to not let him have a commitment, but he'll still seek his revenge, firstly. When Sonic casually calls him Boomer out of complete nowhere, when he long stopped calling the Prime Rotor that, Rotor is really surprised because Boomer is what his brother used to call him. Sonic tells him not to ask how he knows that name because it'll only confuse him. Fortunately for him not calling him crazy, Rotor inexplicably decides to just drop it. This feels very forced. Why would he call him that in the first place? This issue was by Ian Flynn, and was about the alternate Rotor being called out on how he's just there to get revenge for his family. And I was impressed by how Sonic even told him the pragmatic reason for why his revenge is pointless. All it'll do is open up new jobs in the Chaotix. It's not going to bring his family back. It also reveals that Rotor is training not just to prove to Bean that he's a good fighter, but because he blames himself for his family's death thinking he was weak back then. While he is a jerk, yelling at Sonic and being way too harsh with him with his insults, and even wanting him to die, threatening to kill him, which makes Sonic calling him Boomer all the more appropriate in hindsight, I'm much more interested in this Rotor than the Prime one. He has a more complex character than a guy who doesn't have any actual flaws. I heard the reboot Rotor is more cynical and pragmatic, and if he's anything like this, I might really like him. But, like, first, first of all, Bean was said to have been holding Rotor back from fighting, getting the action, because he didn't trust him. But now the whole argument is about Rotor not committing himself enough to the cause when that was Bean's fault. And second, it was really forced that Rotor was called Boomer and didn't ask how he knew that. And it sure is convenient that Bark managed to think to go look for them and found them fighting. It's interesting that in this comic, the heroes all make such a big deal about how resentful they are of a former coward who is more trouble than he was worth, and yet the Prime Antoine never got that level of resentment from his friends. Even though the the Sonic was fast, so you think that they would have been a little more forgiving of his cowardice, or I guess less forgiving since it would be more frustrating because he should be better than he is, but... Like, granted, these Freedom Fighters are more bitter, but after just three years of fighting? Really? Though, their enemies are all organic beings instead of robots, so they'd have to get bitter to be able to deal with it. With Bean fighting with bombs and Antoine hitting with swords, and none of them seem to care about the counts they're racking up anymore. Really, Eggman was being very merciful by sending robots. Less traumatizing to destroy them by the hundreds. Which is why him relying on Legionnaires later to mess with the heroes would make sense later in the comic. But he never says that. So it just felt like he's randomly using them when he's more iconic for using robots. 